Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so uh, welcome to every one of you. Uh, now well over 50 people, amazing crowd, and uh, so grateful to welcome you from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We just about to burst into snow. Ooh. And um, uh, my name is Dr. Silverman. I am with Life Vantage for uh, four plus years and uh, absolutely blessed. So today, guys, today is an, uh, so as you see me, I practice uh, surgical pathology. So I am a laboratory oncologist by designation and I diagnose breast cancers uh, or I diagnose any kind of breast diseases. We, today is the unprecedented uh, a Zoominar. I call them Zoominar because never ever we had a presentation with three doctors participating. Not only we have three doctors on panel today, well, two of them are actually now on the medical advisory board with Life Vantage. So how lucky you are. And uh, uh, both of them are absolutely outstanding individuals. Not only that they're walking the walk, but guys, uh, let's start, let's say, with Nancy, Dr. Nancy Bryan, who is a doctor of pharmacology. She lives in Arizona. Um, I'm not undermining Dr. Melody Radarki, who was voted one of the uh, best doctors in Phoenix. But she's like, she's like me. She carries MD. But Nancy <laughs> is a doctor of pharmacology, meaning that she knows drugs. That is actually her specialty. So for me to see a doctor pharmacologist, a doctor of pharmacology, uh, well, well versed, published, known, uh, to do this stuff, I don't know whether it's getting more of a validation, a better validation than this. Uh, so, and also Nancy may tell you her story, her personal, a little bit of her personal story, uh, with uh, Life Vantage products and why, and mind you, every one of that, every one of us, a product of a product. We all three of us, we are on products experiencing health benefits. Uh, uh, now, uh, Dr. Melody Radarty is absolutely amazing, and she, ha, huh, uh, she's uh, one of the top class graduates unlike me, but, um, no, and she, she's got multiple, multiple credentials, and now she specializes in bariatric medicine. Um, you're aware of what is bariatric medicine. She deals with obesity on everyday basis, and you know that North America, for some reason, is seriously prone to this. Um, uh, with this said, uh, Melody, and thank you, Dr. Radarte, for, for participating in this event because you, yesterday you landed from Haiti where she was doing a missionary voluntary job as a doctor, you know, donating her time, her efforts, her knowledge for no money. So, uh, and today she is jet lagged, but she, she actually volunteered. She said, can I be, can I be with you guys? And, you know, we were debating, Nancy, and I maybe say no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Absolutely blessed. So, guys, let's jump on board and let's start this thing. So, uh, let me get, uh, or the slides are kind of interfering with my um, uh, presentation. So, that's us. So, Dr. Radarty. Can you please talk to us about DNA and nutrigenomics? I thank you for that. And you sell yourself short. You are brilliant. And I learn from you every time we talk. So uh, um, I'm just excited to do this. And you forgot to say that we were going to do one. So I'm excited the three of us are doing it because it's even more fun doing the more the merrier. And I learn from Nancy every time we talk too. And uh, you were part of that medical advisory board for the longest time too. So quit selling yourself short. But I love this opening slide, talk to your DNA, 
because I think a lot of us forget about what nutrition does. And now it has become a household topic, nutrigenomics. It is the scientific study of the effects of um, nutrients and compounds on our body and so we are trying to reclaim our health at that cellular level and with that I'm going to lead off with letting Dr. Nancy talk about um, that incredible um, protection that we need. That's right and you know just one one sentence that I may interject guys our DNA what I've learned recently is only two percent of our genes are coded that nothing we can do about them. 98% of our DNA material is not coded. That's why we are so excited. That is- Dr. Awesome. Brian. Well, and I agree with Dr. Rodarte, Sveta, please, you should never, ever, ever, ever diminish your abilities. We both are here because of people like you, and we are so grateful for you to do this today. So thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. So today, let's talk about what we're going to be seeing here with free radicals. I just finished doing some uh, testing with a few people a few hours ago, trying to get them to understand what is a free radical and why is this such a problem? Well, all the toxins that we see in our environment, be it from the Wi-Fi, be it from our cell phones, be it from things in the ground, from toxins that are pesticides. We have so many different things that are affecting our bodies. And when you look at this, we're talking about toxins um, destroying by being um, electrons turned into free radicals. What that means is they have a charge to them. And so when they spin out of control, they're literally bumping into all the different things in our cells and creating all kinds of damage to each one of our cells. So when we take a look at disease, what does that mean? When you're on a cellular level destroying the, the actual structure of a cell, that's going to go into tissues and it's going to start becoming organs. And eventually that's where you're seeing diseases take place. So the disease is a melding of those forces. And look at all the things that we're talking about. We're talking about heart, skin, eyes, blood vessels, immune system. The oxidative stress in that cell is going to affect all of those different areas in the human body. Um, as we take a look, we want to see what are these toxins doing with inflammation. Look at the things on there, brain fog. Oh my gosh, these are things that we deal with every day. Everything from blood pressure, that's all I ever hear about all the time with medications, cholesterol medications, all the different medications, they're all there trying to treat each one of those little things, all caused by the same thing, which is inflammation. So when you take a look at oxidative stress, what Sveta just made a huge comment about, I know it gets complicated here with all the science, but what she's trying to say is that there are things on the outside that affect all of our genes. There's only a very tiny amount of those genes that are gonna be what they're gonna be. The rest are all gonna be um, uh, subject to this oxidative stress that we can change by doing things with nutrients. Look at the depletion of the reserves of low molecular mass antioxidants. So we have two low antioxidants. We have two inactive antioxidants of our own. And when all these factors come together, what you're going to see is um, oxidative stress from the outside and the inside working together causing problems. And that's why this is so important that we take a look at reducing oxidative stress. So how do we do that? We do that with nerve 2 activation. That's going to activate our own body's antioxidants. I can't express how important this is that these five ingredients done sub-therapeutically, sub-small amounts, and what they do each individually is just picture a bunch of wires going to a dimmer switch. And each one of those ingredients turning on several of those, but not all of them. But together, when they all do it, then the switch goes on because it's 1,800 times more effective because each one of those is turning on different wires. And by doing that, we see 40 to 70% of oxidative stress reduced between 30 and 90 days. Um, one of the most important things to me as uh, 
in pharmacy is looking at certifications. The Banned Substance Control Group, they really study in-depth products to make sure there's nothing in them that shouldn't be there for athletes, yes, but also to make sure there's nothing dangerous in them. We also use uh, the NSF certification. Those are really important purity standards that we're using when we make this product. We have, um, it says six patents. I think we actually have uh, another one coming, but we have five international as well with 26 published studies. And all of those um, all do one thing that is the most extraordinary, and that is that we actually have a uh, study now showing that it literally is the only supplement proven to increase lifespan. And that was amazing to me. So when you take a look at it, the antioxidants and the cellular trash being removed by those are the sole reason that we try to talk about the Nerf 2. It's going to signal our own antioxidants hundreds of millions of times stronger than anything you can take on the outside to signal your cells to remove this trash. All right, this was unbelievable, wasn't it? So now let's get into that guy, NRF2. Dr. Regardi, what is NRF2? It is, I love that line up there, but to make it simple, it's just saying it's the master regulator of the cell. And its purpose is to protect our cells from oxidative stress, from that wear and tear that's happening. And so when we age, that our NRF2, we need it to increase. And unfortunately, it, it decreases as we start to age. And so you want something that can trigger it. And so I love this, um, this slide because it talks about just that NRF2 uh, pathway and why we are so excited to share this with everyone. Because what Washington State University is stating is that we may be on the verge of a new literature on the health effects of NRF2, which may well become the most extraordinary therapeutic and most extraordinary preventative breakthrough in the history of medicine. Until now, we do not have something that is therapeutic and preventative at the same time at this potency. And so what we can look at when we start to look at that NRF2 pathway is we can look at certain disease states. So if you type in NRF2 and neurodegeneration, there's that link that um, as, as neurodegeneration neurodegeneration is happening, then types of um, dementias can happen, types of neurologic diseases can happen. And so there is a link and we want to stimulate that NRF2 pathway to protect ourselves to have that cellular response of decreasing stress. And so here's just another point talking about Alzheimer's type of dementia. And so that type of inflammation, it develops in the brain because of free radical damage. And at this point, we don't have very many things that really can reduce that inflammation and that stress. And we are now finding more and more articles start, starting to discuss uh, that NRF2 pathway protecting us against Alzheimer's disease. Um, another way of just kind of talking about it, saying that NRF2 deficiency aggravates learning and memory deficits in induced by analog amyloidopathy and topathy. And um, then we talk about MS. So the first drug out on the market to be an NRF2 activator is Tecfidera for MS. The second drug is for ALS. So we already, we've kind of talked about this. We need NRF2 to be stimulated, to be used in order to decrease oxidative stress and free radical damage. And the key part between doing it naturally versus synthetically is we're gonna have less side effects. We are more potent. Um, one of the articles, when you go to PubMed and you read through it, you're gonna notice that we do it better than a actual synthetic drug. And Dr. Brian can definitely talk to that about synthetic versus natural. When we can do it naturally, we definitely want to do it that way. Our body um, knows what to do with it. Nancy, isn't uh, the component of dimethyl fumarate or tecfidera is a varnish? Yes, I know. It's incredible some of the things they start putting together when you start seeing uh, different uses of chemicals. You know, it's, it's like they use uh, warfarin, coumadin, and that was a component in rat poison. So Lovely. it's pretty scary when you think about where they get some of these things. Lovely. 
All right. So let's now, uh, now it's my, the turn to my excitement. <laughs> so guys, uh, the reduction of free radical damage or oxidative stress is absolutely critical. And now I'm going to tie it up with one of my favorite organelles in the cell, which is called mitochondria. Mitochondria is that uh, little things, quite a few of them in the cell, up to three to 4,000 in some cells that actually controls the cell well-being or the, the, the cellular fate. And um, the excitement of us as physicians or uh, different kinds of doctors in Life Vantage is if you look at this NRF1 protondum, and I will tell you a little bit later about NRF1 protein, Dr. Radardi magnificently explained to you NRF2 protein. But this guy, NRF1 protondum, is the only branded nutraceutical on the market. I probably can state it with a great degree of authority because I just reviewed the literature on therapeutic modalities for mitochondrial health. So mitochondria, mitochondria is, as I told you, it, it wears many, many hats. The most important hat of a mitochondria is it's our powerhouse. It's our electric factory. It gives us that energy that most of us are lacking uh, uh, past 20 years of age. If you have a brain fog, welcome to the uh, lack of mitochondria. Uh, another function of a mitochondria is mitochondria holds the key to our DNA. That's why it is so important. 98% of this DNA can be manipulated in a healthy way. How? But it also can be manipulated in an adverse way by bad mitochondria. So it's absolutely imperative to keep mitochondria healthy. And another thing is mitochondria is our cellular police those policemen recognize bad cells and give the signals to wipe them out. So if mitochondria is tired, diseased, aged, or what, what we call dysfunctional, it doesn't recognize bad cells, and then bad things happening like cancer, for example. So the, the, now let's connect uh, free radical damage or oxidative stress with mitochondria. Mitochondria is very basically like it's a canary in a coal mine because it's naked. It's not protected from the outside stress from the free radicals. And free radicals destroy mitochondria as well as mitochondria is that organelles that work so hard in the cell that it makes most free radicals in the cell. So it's like a double whammy. It's from the outside and it's from the inside. But if mitochondria is healthy, it makes its own protection. It makes its own antioxidants. That's when NRF2 is so critically important because it stimulates to make this antioxidants in the mitochondria itself. So these are some symptoms of dysfunctional or lazy mitochondria. And this, uh, this study absolutely blew me away because guys, look at this. 50 to 80% of children with autism have <clears throat> mitochondrial dysfunction. And we know that oxidative stress is also linked to autism, ADD, ADHD. So now, NRF1 guy. So NRF2 stimulates our cells to reduce that free radical damage. It turns on our vacuum cleaners. Well, NRF1 guy makes cells to make new, young, functional, vibrant mitochondria. So this to me is a one to punch. We need to clean the old ones, but we need to make the new ones. So that's why, you know, I am preaching both of them. And the bottles look very pretty these days. All right, Dr. Rodarity. Dr. Rodarity is amazing. She also has a passion for healthy skincare products. Um, I'm wondering why. 
I, I love skincare products because, you know, so many people, that's, it's our largest, largest organ, and we feel confident when we look confident. And, you know, I was 27 when I first got acne after having my kids, and I did not want acne, nor did I want to grow old showing my age. I wanted to stay looking young where people look at me and say, are you sure you're not my nurse? Are you really not? Are you old enough to be my doctor? So I love our products because it is patented both for protection and repair of our skin. Nothing else out there is patented this way to protect and repair. And it came about because of science. Again, we are in love with this company because of the science behind it. Louisiana State University used ProTandem looking at skin cancers. And those are three journal articles that you can read and it act and that's why True Science was born. And it was showing to not allow that um, cell mutation to happen, the, that growth to happen. And so it was protecting the cell. It's a four step process. We actually go down through that epidermis. That's where you want skincare lines to go down to protect every cell in there. So you have a keratinocyte, you have a melanocyte, you have a basal, uh, you know, all of those make your collagen. They help you not have sunspots. They help you hydrate. And when all of those come together, you get shiny skin, you get glowing skin. And this is the perfect example. On the left, you see what retinase and retinols can do. They can bloat your cells up. They can disorganize. Now, I will tell you, we still use retinols and retinase, but now we have some even better than that. And on the right, you can see how nice that pink layer on the very top is. That is what you want to protect. I, like Sveta said, I just came back from Haiti. I wish I could slather some of these kids and some of the skin with it just to really help them protect their skin and, not, and protect that barrier from dehydration as well as organisms. We need that intact skin. And if you can see that pretty blue color, that is just having hyaluronic acids and just a very dense dermis to lift up the skin and have a healthy skin. So this is an organ we want to protect. We want to repair, repair not only because of different skin conditions, but most of us don't want skin cancers. And so sometimes, you know, pictures are definitely worth a thousand words. And so the upper left-hand corner, this is a gentleman who only did true science on half of his face. And then he started to look like he had a stroke because part of his face was lifting. I'll tell you, I actually had a few patients like this where I thought, they haven't had their Botox by me lately. And you can see that on the, on the right-hand side, the decrease in that, the crow's feet. I see it over and over and over again where people's skin is just feel, responding so much quicker than some of the other skincare lines that I've recommended. In the middle, you can see a, um, a burn heel without hypo or hyper pigmenting. It almost, it's returning to normal. And I've seen this with my own eyes, his skin, it's beautiful. That's not airbrushed or photoshopped. And um, on the bottom left, you can see just, um, I've seen this with psoriasis and eczema. When you activate that nerve two pathway, we can repair and protect the skin. Over and over again, we've, we've seen this. And, and that's the, the beauty of the skincare line and why I can, I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> and look at her, she's still 27. <laughs> and glowing. <laughs> All right, back to Dr. Brian, because she also has a passion for probiotics and microgut. You, I do. I'll tell you, um, you know what, we're talking about all of these things, and the number one thing we need to do is make sure it's getting into our system. And so why I love ProBio, it really is part of what Sveta talked about, Nerf 1 and Nerf 2 being that one-two punch. This is the one-two-three. And I view this as one of the most important parts because when our digestive tract isn't working right, we're not gonna communicate a lot of things that should be communicated. We're not gonna absorb things that aren't being absorbed properly. So when you take a look at the probiotic, why this is so different um, is because it has a coating on it. That coating protects it. You're gonna get over 60% of this probiotic into the digestive tract and the proper bacteria, the lactobacillus and those probiotics have to go in certain places. The 
Lactobacillus needs to be in the upper portion of the small intestine. That's where it's going to be delivered. The bifidus needs to be in the lower portion of our digestive tract. That's where it's going to be delivered. And it's all going to go in an amount of time that is going to be like a time release. And that is when it's going to allow it to make a home in there. When it makes a home in there, that biome is what helps everything from our mitochondria to be produced right to um, signaling things in our brain. There's so many components in our digestive tract that have to do with our health, and that's really important. On top of that, it has Wellmune in it. And what that is, is it's the ability, it's going to signal through these beta-glucans, our white blood cells, so that they become active but not overactive. We want them to be sensitive to the right things. We want our immune system to protect us against cancers and against autoimmune diseases, not to just be going willy-nilly. And um, because of that, that probiotic is gonna be the thing that helps to take the NERF2 and the NERF1, making sure that gut lining is gonna be appropriate and the right things are gonna get crossed going back and forth the way that they should. And Dr. Sveta, go ahead and tell us about Axio. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Guys, yeah, it's like the micro gut health. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about the brain health. But guess what? Guess where do we produce serotonin? We actually make over 70% of our happy hormone, so to speak, in our gut. Now, Axio. Axio is... It's, uh, to call it an energy drink is a misnomer. It's a brain food. It's literally a brain food. And uh, is it an energy drink? Yes, it is. How is it an energy drink? It gives you sustainable energy through the day. Let's say I was up at six o'clock in the morning and that keeps you hydrated. It keeps me hydrated. So up at six o'clock in the morning, it's now approaching nine o'clock in the evening in Edmonton. I'm in my office, uh, balancing between life vantage and pathology and obviously wide awake and stuff. Now, uh, the, the composition of Axio is so great. It's so healthy because it provides you the sustainability, it provides you the brain power. It allows you to calm down. It allows you to focus, to concentrate, to think straight. And it actually allows to run fast and recover faster. And it's all through the composition. And, you know, I'm not going to go through the uh, every ingredient, but there are very few of them. But look how great they are. Uh, antioxidants, quercetin, the healthy B vitamin complex, DMAE to stimulate our brain, green tea extract with multitude of healthy uh, uh, modalities, New Zealand pine bark, anti-inflammatory, lowering blood pressure, and we already went on serotonin path, and L-theonine is a precursor what actually can, can uh, help to, to make that uh, serotonin molecule. It's amazing stuff, but I love Axio because, uh, I love the Axio uh, because it gives us different flavors. You know, everybody's palate is different. If I like raspberry, it doesn't mean that, let's say, Nancy likes raspberry. Maybe she likes grapefruit, and maybe Melody likes grape, or a dragon fruit flavors. And the, the general composition of those major ingredients is the same, but the flavoring is different and the flavoring is a natural flavoring and it is sweetened by stevia. There is no sugar. So people are asking me, oh, diabetics, or oh, is it going to spike the blood sugar? None of the above. But you know, also my excitement came from one of the ingredients. Obviously I am linked towards health. Look at one of the components, ZMAE. In 1915, why are we so uh, promotional, per se, on Axio and kids with autism, with ADD, ADHD, uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome? Because what do they give to kids with ADD and ADHD? They give them Ritalin. And Ritalin, as far as I am aware, is an amphetamine. Isn't amphetamine a prohibited substance? <laughs> and we give it to the children, right? So now, in 1959, we knew that the natural product is going to make them better. 
So would I go basically for a drug? I will try to introduce something that is healthy and that is real. So, and uh, guys, so uh, to me, this is a great slide. We talk about health. And we haven't, we haven't talked about food and other modalities of health. That's another talk. But when we talk proper, nutraceut proper nutraceuticals, you guys need to understand this is not a one-day affair. This is not a one-week affair. And this is not one-month affair. This is basically all life affair now because if you want your brain healthy and regenerate in a proper way, you need to give it time. This is not Tylenol. So as you see on this slide, how long does it take for our cells to regenerate? And not only we want to regenerate them, to reorganize them, but we want to keep us healthy. So why go off something that preserves my health? Like, Look, really, look at Dr. Rodarty. She does look like 27 years old, seriously. So, and then, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Brian has a tremendous, tremendous story. I don't know, Nancy, would you be comfortable to share a little bit? Because we're great on time. I know, I don't want to take up a lot of time. But basically, one of the reasons I was so drawn to this company and the product was because I had gone through breast cancer in 2008. And uh, Sveta is very familiar with the kind of breast cancer that I have. It's um, a rather rare one. And the gene expression that I have is called Leifermini's. And um, so even though I had gone through my surgeries and chemotherapy and was, I was doing all the things that I thought I should be doing, I thought I was the healthiest person I knew before okay. that happened, but I still got breast cancer. And then after, for six years, I still could never get my cancer titers to be different, no matter how I seem to eat, no matter how I exercise. And part of that had to do with, with the way my genes were expressing. Once I started on the NERF 2, I sit, saw a very small um, increase in um, just my energy, just within a few weeks. And then right away, maybe uh, by a month, I could tell I was starting to get stronger. But my cancer titers were still not where I wanted them to be. And over time, they were starting to go down a little by little. Um, and then when I added in the Nerf One and the ProBio on top of it, what I saw was a significant change in how the synergy of those three things together worked. And my cancer titers ended up dropping from 30, going all the way down to below 10. At that point, my doctor could not believe what he saw. He, he just kept telling me, I need to hear more about it. I sat and actually sat through one of my appointments explaining to him. And the reason is because over that period of time of about two years is where I saw all these different parts of my cells and my DNA start to have healing take place. And today I feel so strong. I can't tell you how much better I feel. And um, that's proven by my lab work. When you see my lab work, all of my lab work now is just perfectly normal. And that's because my body now is utilizing all the things that it needs. It's utilizing the foods that I'm using. And that NERF2 pathway is working with the mitochondrial pathway to give me proper health. Unbelievable. And is it called nutrigenomics? Absolutely. It is nutrigenomics doing its finest work where we're going to see gene expression properly when we have the proper entities going into, into the cell. Unbelievable. And guys, that's, you see our excitement. You know, I am on a road to uh, Germany in a couple, couple weeks, and I'm going to present um, the study, my passion, breast cancer, NRF1, mitochondria, because it's all about health. And um, so guys, uh, don't you think that we had I, I, I don't even have a word of a gratitude to find, to express my gratitude to those um, two amazing ladies. I think we had a tremendous, 
tremendous talk. Uh, thank you very, very much. Guys, we did amazingly well on time. And that allows us an opportunity for you guys to type the questions to Nancy and Melody. I am not going to unmute any one of you because it's going to be extremely noisy. So please type your questions in the chat. And those two distinguished doctors are going to reply. Thank you, Dr. Rodarty. Thank you, Dr. Brian. Unbelievable. The best oh, webinar. Pleasure. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, question time. Um, why can't I hear? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, no questions yet. Oh, one new message. Oh, amazing, thank you. Is it being recorded? Yes. <laughs> Guys, this is a very rare opportunity to have Dr. Brian and Dr. Rodardi. You better ask questions. <laughs> they are two very, very, very busy people. Can you tell me how uh, this, okay, here comes. Can you tell me how this will affect scoliosis and spina bifida, Dr. Rodarty? Well, I think you can just take that as thinking about um, inflammation. So scoliosis, there's, there's a curvature of the spine. So then there's the effect on the muscles, the tiny little muscles between there, as well as um, with spina bifida, there's, there's incomplete closing there to protect. And so what we're just doing is trying to decrease inflammation. And so if you decrease inflammation, that decreases, you know, pain and, and discomfort and hopefully increases function. That's what NERF2 is doing is going in and releasing, um, you know, our own antioxidants to decrease sclerosis and inflammation. Awesome. Thank you very much. Of course, absolutely. You don't know what we have is a modulator, cellular modulators. How is it going to affect the functionality of the whole body? Um, can children take Axio with DMAE, Dr. Brian? Absolutely. Yes, they, they can. And the thing is, what you need to understand is that um, all of those neurotransmitters that are working, uh, they are able to function so much better with DMAE. I know that we have children um, here in the Valley that have had autism that we've worked with as young as four. Um, we have seen just tremendous results. What I try to do as a whole is I use about a half of a packet or I just have someone mix the whole glass and give just half of that when they're under um, eight or nine years old. And once they reach about eight, nine, or 10, at that point, I'll, I'll have the parent um, work with them and see if they do pretty well taking a whole. Um, but many of our autism kids will take one in the morning as they're heading off to school, and then they'll have another one when they come home um, because that allows them to focus when it's time for them to get their work done. But I feel very comfortable with children taking Axio. And you just have to see which one they like. They're like us. They like different flavors. And you sometimes see different things with different um, issues with kids. If they tend to be ADHD or if they tend to be ADD, it just depends on if they have autism um, and a lot of other things that are going on there. But it does a tremendous amount of things to help open up communication with them. And gosh, Feta, I wish we had one of the slides that shows um, what it looks like after just two Two weeks of a young man who was, um, I say young man, he was a child, I think he was six or seven, and the writing on one side of the paper versus the other in just two weeks time was so much more clear, legible, and organized. And that's just a very short period of time. So you see that action with Axio right away. Awesome, amazing. Uh, does the green tea in Axio affect per tandem? No, it doesn't. Short answer, it doesn't. I honestly, I don't recommend people to guzzle uh, uh, the whole bottle of Axio. Just drink it normally. So it will not affect the synergy. That's uh, a very good point too, because a lot of people, I have had that experience with people that come to me where they'll, they'll just like down it. And really it's meant, I don't believe to be drank like that. I think it should be um, just over a period of, you know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. 
And especially when people just, uh, you know, just drinking all at once, they sometimes get into a condition which is called nice and flush. And that scares them because, oh, you know, I get funny sensations or I get funny rushes. So drink it normally, like a normal drink. Uh, can you take NRF1 and NRF2 together? Yes, <laughs> that's cool. Part of the activated essentials is uh, we want to help both the mitochondrial health as well as the overall cellular health. So um, we've had some people say start NRF2 first for a little while and then add the NRF1. I've done it just getting people healthy and starting them both at the same time. Um, but you want to fix the whole body, the entire cellular structure. So the mitochondria and the cell. So mine is yes, put them on both right away. Awesome. Awesome. Um, uh, Dr. Dr. Brian, how are these metabolized differently from drugs? Well, first of all, when a drug is made, it's synthetic. It's not a real um, organic, if you will, plant. It's, it's something that they've taken a look at and figured out what a chemical looked like and then synthesized it. And part of the problem, when we first learned chemistry, we learned about balancing equations. The body is nothing but a bunch of chemical equations that go on in it. And so when you take a plant and make it into something uh, like these products, there's probably little parts we don't even really know all the points to. And so what happens is, like with Nerve 2, we have a pulsating manner, and it, it is a biofeedback where it balances itself out. When you take a drug, it goes one way. It's going to take that reaction one way, and when it does that, you're going to need another drug to come the other way to take care of the side effects. And so it's much different than taking a, something that's synthetic. Uh, what, what's, what's about metabolizing through liver or through kidneys? Or oh, well, going through the liver, the thing of it is um, when a drug goes through the liver, it has to break off little tiny parts of that chemical. You'll see it as a chemical structure with little arms and parts that are hanging off it. As it goes through the liver, parts of that break off. It actually becomes something else when it's research recycles through the body. And that process for certain things like uh, neurotransmitter medications, um, antidepressants, that's why it takes so long to get them into the system and get them out because it'll recycle for sometimes a week. And that's called the half-life of a drug. And with these products, especially when you consider the um, components that are in the Nerf 2, they're literally going cell by cell and cleaning out things like the liver and the kidneys so that they can operate and function very well instead of slowing them down and clogging them up. So bottom line for two doctors, so uh, our products are very safe with the drugs. Yes. To be taken with the drugs, correct? They do not have interactions with any medications. The thing I always like to tell people though is you have to be respectful of how well this is going to make a body. So that may mean that they're not going to be requiring blood pressure medications down the road as their body starts returning toward health. And as that happens, you want to make sure that your doctors are aware that you are taking something that may have have um improvement in your health. So you need to maybe take a look at having some of your medications reduced. And that's really, really important because um, there's not a lot of things out there. They, if they, There's things out there that'll interfere with your drugs, they'll interfere with your liver metabolism, and they will make the drugs not work properly. What this does is it helps your health improve so much that a lot of times you need the dosage reduced because you're not needing the medication nearly as much anymore. That's awesome. Thank you. Dr. Rodarty, uh, can someone with osteoarthritis combine glucosamine and NRF2 per tandem? I would say that if they want to stay on their glucosamine, they can. And the nice part is, is when you go to PubMed, you can look up osteoarthritis and protandum. There's actually a study there that they can <laughs> refer to. <laughs> yep. And so, you know, I would say it's, it's much better than glucosamine and getting a pure glucosamine is very difficult and very expensive. And so if they want to, I think this is where, unfortunately, doctors say taking supplements makes expensive pee. It's because, or urine is because of some of these things are not in the best form. There's other fillers, they're not in the right way to be absorbed. But with protandum, we have those certifications proving it's it, what is 
on the label is in the pill is what we are ingesting. And um, we have the science behind it that it is actually the most potent NERF2 activator. And with doing that, we're decreasing inflammation at the best degree right now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karen, just go online or PubMed and type fibromyalgia, rheumatica, and oxidative stress. It will give you the idea of the link between two of them or just uh, search NRF2 and fibromyalgia, rheumatica. And again, uh, it will, and then, then tie the notes. Uh, it will give you a pretty good idea. Uh, Rachel, I have a young lady that just went through breast cancer and not feeling too much yet with NRF2, but only been on maybe two months. Uh, would you suggest the essentials? Definitely. Okay, you've heard the doctor. Is she on chemotherapy? Uh, she will type later. I don't see that. Even with uh, chemotherapy, I don't know um, if uh, Dr. Rodarte wants to touch on this, but with the, um, my oncologist here in Arizona is probably one of the top, he's the top oncology hematologist here in the Valley. He uh, guest teaches at Harvard. I mean, he is really well known. And he at first said absolutely not during chemotherapy. And he has changed that tune. And so now we are utilizing the NERF2 during chemotherapy, and then utilizing the NERF1 as soon as chemotherapy is finished. And um, really, truly seeing some I, you know, I'm three years out now watching people, uh, and I don't have people come to me that are well. I receive uh, questions and um, requests from people that are very ill, and we are seeing some really, truly remarkable things when the body gets to be back where it's supposed to be, creating its own antioxidants and turning on those pathways again. We see some amazing healing. And I think we have a study, Sveta, don't we have a study showing that during chemo, it's yeah, chemo protective to health cells and it helps the chemotherapy to kill the bad cells. Um, the question is, um, uh, how far from chemotherapy would you recommend NRF1 per ton? And what's the time frame? I think it does depend on the kind of cancer. Right. Um, and uh, from what I'm seeing, for the most part, um, it's anywhere from usually about um, two to four weeks all the way up to two months. It depends on what is, is uh, and how long they've been on the cancer uh, treatment. So with NRF2 pretendum, guys, your experience again with chemotherapy, sometimes I know now it's a propagated sometimes during the whole course, but if it's in between treatments? Mm -hmm. That and would, how far a couple days after the treatment? Uh, yes. In fact, I get a lot of questions in regard to what they should do before surgeries. And it's really important when someone, for, for whatever reason, is going in for surgery, for them to stop at least five to seven days out just because of clotting factors. And that's with pretty much anything. Um, but with chemotherapy, um, you know, you want to let the chemo get to do, usually it's two to three days after you actually receive the chemotherapy where it's doing its heaviest work. And so if they're going to do it in between treatments, I would say they need to go out at least five to seven days after then. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Paula Gibson from Canada. I love you. Uh, we done with chemotherapy. Uh, um, how do you help with the detox side effects? Mm. Well, I can say something, and I'll see what Dr. Brian says too, but, you know, if it's starting to clean things up, I tell people you can either push through it, it's okay, um, drink lots of water, sleep a little bit more and push through it, let it clean out the system. Or if you're someone who doesn't like that, to know that you're going through detoxification, cut it in half or take it every other day and, and you'll have a, a, slower, a slower detox kind of feeling. But most of the time, it's just in the first few days, you might feel like you're a little bit, maybe a run down or have, maybe are getting the flu, but you're, you're not really getting the flu. Your body's responding and your liver is getting rid of the, the crap mm -hmm. that's around it. So I say push through it, hydrate and sleep a little bit more and get, your, get you on to better health. 
Awesome. I absolutely Thank you. agree a hundred percent. The only, I, there are times when people are on a lot of medications when they're on a lot of medications. And if they are, a lot of things are going to start happening. So in those cases, sometimes we have to go a little bit slower just because we're going to have to start making some adjustments with what's going on with medications. But for the most part, I I'm with Melody. I would just soon just get, on with it and move through it because honestly they're going to feel so it, you don't want to have to wait to feel better if people really truly knew how i feel now compared to how i felt three years ago we'd have 50 million people on this stuff i'm not kidding it just changes your system that much that's awesome thank you rachel in terms of autistic children i know that have a taste they have a very different taste preferences and stuff mm -hmm. one just has to find the way how to squeeze it into them uh both axio nrf1 nrf2 for autistic kids of course probio because their micro gut is not functioning properly it's a struggle it just the parent has to find the way and every autistic child is different so it's it just you're in you you've got to be inventive as a parent and just find the way whether it's through juice whether it's through smoothie something <laughs> good luck with this uh, cerebral palsy well, I probably will answer this question because I have a tremendous, uh, I have a family uh, in my business, um, uh, their parents, uh, it's a family with three kids with cerebral palsy. Uh, the parents are absolutely amazing. And we put the kids on every product. Uh, you need to see the results. Mm -hmm. You need to see the little boy who was not walking and who is running now on stage and stuff to tears, just tears. Uh, how can pretandum help with scleroderma? Doctors? <laughs> you know, well, it's an autoimmune disorder. So, you know, with autoimmune disorders, we're more linked to inflammation and, and things in our, our diet can affect it. We're more susceptible to other immune, autoimmune disorders. So when someone tells me, and as I'm kind of looking through some of the questions, if you just want to type into Google Scholar or PubMed NRF2 and name that disease, you're going to see what oxidative stress does to it. And that is one of those, that's an autoimmune process and you want to decrease inflammation. It's the root cause of so many of these things were popping up in, in, in these questions. And so what happens when we reduce stress the cell starts to act a little bit normal and and maybe resumes back to normal normalcy but we are definitely reducing chronic disease i think the uh, other thing that i like to bring up about it as well is that anti-fibrolytic and when you have all those fibers and scarring going on to have not only the enzymes that that um are not fibrolytic that keep things soft but also reducing the ones that do cause the fiber. And I think we kind of forget about those sometimes because that scarring, that is such an important thing for the outside. Also all our blood vessels on the inside, that's just really kind of like skin on the inside if you think about it. And all of those things as, as time goes on, it's not just the infl inflammation, it's the damage that that inflammation causes. And that's where it works on both avenues of those. Amazing, thank you. Uh, guys, just one disclaimer, of course, like three doctors on the panel, we don't, we don't claim to treat, cure, mitigate disease. So please don't go on YouTube and start, you know, posting things that we yeah. have the cure of all. Let me answer uh, the question very fast. Milk, thistle, and breast cancer concerns? No. We don't. No. No, no none. Very confident, no. Uh, now, could any of the products help with rat syndrome? Of course. Rat syndrome is a neurodegenerative condition. So I will strongly encourage you to go on PubMed or Google Scholar. Again, type rat syndrome, oxidative stress. So a rat syndrome to me, NRF2, NRF1. Um, yes, uh, absolutely. Guys, we're fine with like the question galore. And some of us need to leave in four minutes. So we're going to answer for the next minutes and obviously we need to bring those ladies back
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, so a uh, red syndrome as neurodegenerative, NRF1, NRF2 pretendum, probiotics, and axio. And I may sound like a broken phone. Yes, that's what I was going to say. We sound like a broken record, but this is because those things are what are making our system well. This is a, a wellness to our system. And when our system is well, we don't have to treat this for that and this for that and this for that. What we're trying to do is make the system well. And when the whole body starts operating out of wellness, those things start taking care of themselves. Awesome. Uh, Nancy, this is for you. Any issues with a Pratanum and Tecfidera at the same time? Um, there, there really isn't. I, I just really struggle trying to understand why anyone would want to take Tecfidera when they list death as a side effect. Honestly, why would you want to even risk it? That's To me, I just don't understand knowing what we know with their studies saying this was the therapeutic um, choice that they had in their own study side by side. They said the protandum was the therapeutic choice for treating MS. I, I don't know how much more clear it could be. And they paid for the study. So for me, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to tell someone to stop taking Tecfidera. Um, they, can, they can go ahead and take it, but I don't know how much the nerve two activation is going to help because that turns it on all the time. And it's the pulsating manner from ProTandem that makes it so effective and the Tecfidera not effective. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, uh, um, does it make sense to take probiotic during chemo? Yes, it does. However, it may create some danger. I think it has to be. It's a tricky question because chemotherapy is an immunosuppressant. Uh, and despite that we are introducing the proper microgut, I don't know, guys, help me out. I still have some questions with regard because of the well mutant that's in there. Okay. So is that your feeling too on that, Melody? That's mine too. I would say, you know, I think probiotics are essential, but I'm not sure if we have anything to really talk about the well mutant portion of it um, helping our, our, our neutrophils. So it, I think it probably depends on the type of cancer, um, where the cancer is. Um, but I am definitely for probiotics during, um, and, and we do know that there are other probiotics that are just not as potent as ours or and not getting to where they need to be. But there are some other um, probiotics. I, I would say yes to probiotics, but I, I can't fully tell you about my thought process on Wellmune. Mm. Exactly. Uh, okay, uh, guys. Uh, she, um, now, if Dr. Rodardi has to go, uh, Nancy, are you okay to stay and answer more questions? Sure. I could say okay, terrific. But guys, uh, would we say all of us thank you to Dr. Rodarty and wish her an amazing trip to Israel. She is going to Israel and I'm extremely jealous. Me too. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll see her in Orlando. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Melody. Can't wait to see you there. Me too. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Keep it going. <laughs> okay. Uh, does Axio help with detox? Yes, it will because it will keep you hydrated. And it will give you vitamins, and it will give you antioxidants, and it will keep your brain sharp. Absolutely, yeah. it will. Drink, a, you know, drink away. Yes. And the B12 really helps, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, so I had some positive results with Awesome with Scleroderma and Joint and Anxiety. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. How can we get this recording later on? Uh, oh, amazing question. Uh, how about effect on brain function, especially after stroke or brain injury? Nancy, would you like to cover it? It's called glutathione. Go ahead. Oh my gosh. It's just amazing what glutathione can do in terms of repair for our brain. And the thing that we see so often is when there's injury to the brain, there's the, the major problem with injury is the fact that we have such decreases in these neurotransmitters and we get such huge inflammation massive inflammation. And so when you take a look at what the whole process of what this is going to do, it's going to help um, to heal where they have the injuries, the mitochondrial repair. Sveta, why don't you talk about that a minute? The Nerf one is amazing. Um, 
uh, listen guys, so there are studies in terms of acute uh, vessel injury, acute brain injury, uh, well, obviously stroke is acute vascular injury. And what happened during this injury, your mitochondria dumps, it goes absolutely, it is crushed. Your mitochondria is crushed. This is an acute period, your glutathione level goes absolutely down into the boots. That is why, to me, this is absolutely critical. If you know somebody with a stroke, if you know somebody with a heart attack, if you know somebody with acute brain injury, to get them on both NRF1 and NRF2 activation, ASAP, seriously. I don't care whether it's going to be pretandum, whether it's going to be Brussels sprouts, sulforaphane, the resveratrol, they need NRF2 activation. They need NRF1 activation to bring their mitochondria to life. So yes, and yes, and yes, the only obstacle may be the physicians who will not allow you to do that. That may be the obstacle. And but they have also PTSD too, all of those PTSD, things. PTSD, absolutely. Concussion syndrome. Um, uh, concussions uh, period. So meaning that go, just please go into pubmed.gov and just search it. Just even do, when you do a superficial search, you will see the importance of um, whatever we said. It is. Uh, okay, I think we are done with the questions and I am going to stop recording.